Definitely. Here, I'm, I'm advertising the crib. The, um, originally, it was definitely hammered. Look, I mean, hammered into into shape. It looks like well, it started. It looks like it started off as a and some, kind of con convex. It's definitely been dented by something. It looks like a, that. You remember we found that car leaf spring? That's a Morris Minor. Definitely. <laughs> Somebody's buried. Morris Minor. Don't there. carry on till we get it out. We don't know what it is, do we? No, pull it out. It's attached to a, a four thousand pound bomb. <laughs> I prefer yeah, tell you a true one. Do you know the Fred Dibner guy I told you about? Yeah, yeah. He used to have a bigger uh, metal yard in um, Peckham. And he was squatting there. And he said they used to have this big block and it had like a handle on the top and they used to chop up all the wire on it. Well the council gave him £5,000 to vacate the yard and he vacated and the Bob Squad ended up. This was a landmine they'd been <laughs> using as a chopping block. Okay, just to give you a bit of orientation on the battlefield, we're looking south to north and we see that the initial Saxon defence line follows a raised piece of ground from Rackwell Wood on the right across to the Crowhurst Road, or as it is now, and the Norman advance is coming up from the south from there, uh, yomp up from Wilting, and if we just uh, show you where the helmet ring was found, highly significant, right on the edge there of the front line, if I just ink in the Malfos for you, you can see that the uh, stream runs there. The stream is, is right at the edge of the field and is definitely deep enough to end, upend a whole bunch of horses, which is what we see in the Bayer Tapestry. Over on the left-hand side, uh, we see the church and abbey. If William had made a battlefield oath to build an abbey on the site of the battle, that's where he would have built it. And there was a church already standing there at the time. Here we are looking from the Saxon defence line, looking down towards Rackwell Wood and rotating around towards the plain. So if you were a Saxon on that first defence line, that's the view of the approaching Norman army coming up from the plain and getting itself into battle order. If we swing the camera view around and look back up the hill, once again, the battle was not just fought here, it was fought about three quarters of a mile. William spent the whole day slogging his way up. If we rotate the camera view and look at it from the Saxon point of view back towards the south, and we put in the defence line there, Rackwell Wood is on the left hand side, and uh, you'll see that the Malfoss uh, is running along the edge of that wood. Norman advance coming in from the plain. So the battle would have been all along that first uh, defence line and we've been excavating in the lower Malfoss. The helmet was found at this location and it was about 8 inches to 10 inches below the base of the stream and there's a fair amount of accretion on it. Over on the right hand side we see the abbey remains and the church. And another significant thing not mentioned uh, up to now is the Crowhurst Yew. If you turn to page 215 to 216 of Nick's book, Secrets of the Norman Invasion, uh, he gets into the significance of the Crowhurst Yew and the Bayer Tapestry where trees appear and the Crowhurst Yew is clearly featured. Here's the uh, so-called helmet ring, 21 centimeters in diameter. And there's an inner ring that seems to have dislodged inside it. Again, fair amount of accretion. Uh, so we're going to get that looked at and see if we can come up with uh, what it is. Stay tuned.